diuretics. We're going to cover three main types of diuretic, loop diuretic, thiazide diuretic, and potassium sparing diuretic. The all diuretic works on kidney, and especially nephron, which is a functional unit of kidney. We're going to talk in detail about the each uh, diuretic's mechanism of action, what are their side effects, in which disease condition we use, and the nursing consideration, okay? So let's talk about first loop diuretic mechanism of action. Okay. So this is the diagram representing nephron and which is the functional unit of kidney and all the uh, blood filtration formation of urine reabsorption and excretion of the all the electrolytes happen in this nephron however we are interested in the reabsorption and excretion of sodium potassium and water now before we go into the mechanism of action of loop diuretic let like, un let's understand uh, some uh, part of the nephron and where the sodium water and potassium reabsorption excretion occurs so first of all proximal convoluted tubules where about 65 to 70 percent 65 to 70 percent of sodium gets reabsorbed there is no diuretic that works in works here so 65 to 70 percent of sodium is going to get reabsorbed no matter what diuretic we give however this is called descending loop of henley this is loop of henley and this is ascending loop of henley now we are interested in ascending loop of henley in ascending loop of henley there is a pump it's called any plus k plus 2 cl minus now this pump what what it does it uses the energy uses energy to reabsorb sodium potassium and chloride back to the blood now when sodium gets reabsorbed water is going to follow sodium so water is going to get reabsorbed as well in ascending loop of henley now here about 25 percent approximately sodium gets reabsorbed using this pump which uses the energy as well now loop diuretic inhibits the whole pump loop diuretic inhibits this whole reabsorption process when the sodium doesn't get reabsorbed potassium doesn't get reabsorbed and chloride doesn't get reabsorbed water is not going to get reabsorbed as well and when water doesn't get reabsorbed if you look at it here right the ascending loop of handle it's going to go to from here to the collecting ducts and from there it's gonna get excreated excrete through urine so sodium water and potassium and chloride they're all gonna get excreted through the collecting ducts without gets reabsorbed since loop diuretic is gonna inhibit the pump since we understood that mechanism of action of the loop diuretic let's just talk briefly what it does on the on the uh, nephron and especially more in detail like ascending loop of henley and if we if we know this three main mechanism of action of this loop diuretic we'll be able to understand the side effects and also the nursing consideration as well so it prevents the reabsorption of sodium water potassium and chloride okay now indication because of this it excretes the water it can be used for a, for the prevention of edema we can use this medication to prevent the edema that ha that happens in the heart failure pulmonary edema hepatic failure or hepatic cirrhosis or chronically uh, renal failure 
this medication is also used to treat hypertension, especially furosemide. Or also we call this one as a Lasix or water pill. This particular drug uh, physician uses quite often to treat hypertension as well. The next slide we're going to talk about the side effects, nursing consideration, and contraindication. Now, as we talked, the mechanism for action it affects many electrolyte reabsorption in kidney. So, it, the first side effects is electrolyte imbalance, which the first one is causes hyponatremia. Now, when we when we cover lithium medication, which is bipolar medication, we'll go over why the hyponatremia can cause the lithium toxicity. But like since this medication can cause the hyponatremia, and if a patient on lithium medication for bipolar, that can cause serious lithium toxicity. It can cause since the hyponatremia. Because of the hyponatremia, it can cause the central nervous system changes, such as headaches, changes in level of consciousness. So we have to look for those symptoms as well. Another electrolyte imbalance is a hypokalemia. Now due to the low potassium level, now the normal potassium level is 3.5 to 5.2, okay? So usually if a hypokalemia is lower than 3.5. Now it can cause the cardiac arrhythmia and also the digoxin toxicity. Also, we will talk about um, digoxin when in cardiac glycoside um, slides. Now digoxin toxicity can happen when there is a low potassium level in the body. So you have to look for the digoxin toxicity as well. And this finally can cause the hypocholesteremia, which is low chloride level. So if you go back to the mechanism of action slide, and if you look over it, remember we talked about that it prevents the reabsorption of sodium, potassium, and chloride. So it's kind of self-explanatory that why this medication can cause the hyponatremia, hypokalemia, and hypocholesteremia. Now, also as a nurse, if a patient on this medication, you want to monitor the electrolytes, sodium, potassium, chloride, magnesium, and calcium, okay? This medication also can cause significant hypotension. And that's why you have to teach the patient about their side effects like fainting and dizziness. And since this drug also excretes significant amount of water, and causes diuresis. We have to teach patient to look for the signs and symptoms like thirst, dry mouth, significant weight loss, low urine output, usually um, less than 30 ml per hour. hour. This medication also can cause the autotoxicity and one of the sign is uh, one of the signs of the autotoxicity is tinnitus. So you have to look for which is basically ringing in the ears. Okay. So what we have to teach patient and what the nursing consideration. So first of all, have to tell patient to eat high potassium foods because it causes the hypokalemia such as bananas, potatoes, or whatever, like the high potassium containing foods. I have to tell them, like, monitor for signs and symptoms of hypokalemia, such as nausea, vomiting, and generalized weakness as well. We have to tell them, monitor their blood pressure daily. Okay? And uh, uh, avoid using other autotoxic medications, such as gentamicin. And since this one can cause, this medication can cause sudden um, change in blood pressure and can cause the hypotension, we have to educate patient that to avoid sudden changes in the position, rising slowly from lying position to sitting and so forth. They can't let's just change their position suddenly because it can cause significant decrease in high, um, blood pressure 
and um, can cause the dizziness. So what are the examples of loop diuretic? The first one is furosemide which is widely used, doresemide, bumetanide and ethacrinic acid. I haven't seen this medication used quite often uh, in patients. I've seen the furosemide and bumetanide because bumetanide is a really um, strong loop diuretic compared to furosemide. So if they really need a huge amount of diuresis, they, they prefer to use bumetanide compared to furosemide. So that's the nice thing to remember if you're if you're on the if you're working on the floor and kind of wondering like why they're using bumetanide um, instead of furosemide, it's because of they need a um, high amount of diuresis. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.